Welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. I'm your host, Moshe Kasher. And I'm her assistant, Natasha Legero. Uh, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, hon. Thanks for having me on. Well, usually we like to start the podcast with a fight of the week. Natasha stoned everybody. And yes, we usually start this podcast with a fight of the week. But we haven't been able to come up with anything today. And when we came down to start recording this podcast, <laughs> Natasha was like, I can't think of anything. I can't think of anything. And she's like, well, there is something I haven't brought up to you at all. <laughs> I know. So, and I think an ambush fight might be a little weird. I'm willing to. I'm you will- really want this? I want to risk it because it could be it could make for hot pod. Well, I've been taking notes and trying to like figure out how to talk to you about this for about a week. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to this. <laughs> what is it? The Are di- you sure you want me to tell you on the I podcast? I think I know what it is. What do you think it is? The dick too big, ain't it? <laughs> I can't do nothing about that. I can't help it. God made me and God don't make junk. What would I be writing about if I was like, how do I tell him his dick's too big? I how mean... Do, I mean, not writing, but like, you know, figuring... Cause journaling. You're real, here's the thing. You're really hard to argue with. No, I'm not. Because whenever I I'm say, not hard to argue with. Whenever I say something to you, you're always like, why didn't you phrase it like this? And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's what I meant to say. But you're just really good at phrasing things, whereas I make things personal or attack. And I don't mean to. I just don't really know how to, like, talk about a fight. Okay. But, you, yeah, you mean, like, when we get into a fight, I'll sometimes say, if you had phrased it like this, I wouldn't have felt so attacked. Yes. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, I, I don't. <laughs> I guess I just did it, huh? <laughs> but my na- my instinct. Is that mansplaining? I mean, I just think you come from... I don't think it has to do with you being a man necessarily because I think there's a lot of men who aren't as articulate or as in touch with their feelings and also as smart as you. Or as thick-dicked. Or as thick-dicked as you. I'll tell you what. I, I, I Mansplaining, I do think, is a real thing and exists in the world. But I am right now, I'm working in a writer's room of all women for the second time, actually. You've in been a working row. with all only women in the room for the, all year. Yeah, it's pretty wild because usually, obviously, female writers have the opposite experience where they're the only woman in the room. So it's an interesting perspective. But anyway, mansplaining is real or whatever. But the, 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 my boss was like tr- asking me to show her something on a computer um, program, Final Draft, the screenwriting program. And I was explaining it to her. She, she said, Tell, explain it to me. And I was like, okay, well, here's how you do it. And like, she was getting frustrated with the way I was explaining it to her. And then she was like, I just can't, I, you're just mansplaining it to me. And I was like, no, I'm just explaining it to you. And I'm a man. That's, <laughs> like, there's a difference, isn't there? Maybe you were condescending or something. Oh, I was condescending. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That makes sense, Natasha. Maybe you called her babe. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, sugar pussy. Here's what you're going to want to do on the final draft. This kind of stuff's kind of complicated for a broad like you. So anyway, uh, you've been taking notes. Not taking notes, but I just wanted to know the right way to breach it because I don't want you to just like get mad and defensive and accuse me of the same thing. I don't mean to mansplain, but it's broach it. What did I say? Breach it. I went to state school. (laughs) I mean, I don't know what to tell you. You're going to have to deal with that. Breach that baby. What's happening? Okay. So basically, I just feel a little bit like the phone has taken over our lives. And I feel like a lot of my time with you, the phone is like number one. And then the like me and the baby are like number two. And I feel like the phone is an intrusion and should be treated as such, not like treated as priority like the first thing you do when you wake up is stare at the phone and talk to the phone and engage in the phone i don't know it just feels a little overwhelming for me okay i'm going to give you some feedback on the (laughs) uh on the ambush i would say the addition of the phrase and the baby was probably uh that was probably the part that you could have left out well well it's a it's an important part of it because i feel like it's bad modeling for the baby right but probably also not what I would want to broadcast on a public podcast to a bunch of comedy fans. Everybody <laughs> is on their phone in front of their baby. This image of me, me, number one is my <laughs> iPhone. Number two, my wife. Number three, my baby. <laughs> but see, I didn't really mean it like that. That's just how, that's what I mean. That's just how I was like phrasing it in my, in my head. Uh... I he- okay. Um, I'm taking in what you're saying. I definitely. This is not the first time you've breached this. <laughs> you've actually breached it many times. And yeah, I definitely do have a. When's the last time I talked about it? I don't know. Probably many years ago. Two Man- years ago. Many years ago. Two years ago. I haven't. It's not like I bring this up to you a lot. I've been like trying to like not. I would say, e- it is like you bring it up to me a lot. But 
what do you suggest we do about it? I would think we just need like a different phone culture in our home. Mm-hmm. I just think the phone shouldn't be like the when it's hard when you live with other people because we're all becoming and I'm addicted to my phone and we're all addicted to our phone and I sit in front of my phone in front of my baby all day long. Oh, you do a lot. Okay, but I'm just saying I'm like the I I just feel like whatever's happening and maybe it's just as much me. But I'm just, I don't think I'm as into my phone as you are. <laughs> I feel like. I was like, going to say it's not a competition, but it seems like maybe it is. See, this is hard. That's what, see, I needed to have like stuff. I needed to have like ammunition I mean, and I'm not no, really prepared for this fight. You, there is no fight. There's no ammunition. I'm addicted to my phone. Everyone's addicted to their phone. The fucking world is ending. The ice caps are melting. The, like the, the the political news cycle is psychotic. What can I do? I'll, I'll try. I guess the culture that I would like is maybe a little more like engage with everyone first and then go to the phone. I Instead hear you. Instead of making the phone feel like it's like the number one superior force in our lives that is like, obviously it's this magnetic pull. It's horrifying. Right. But to be fair to me, since I'm the only one that's going to advocate for me right now, my baby's asleep, but she'd probably back me up. You do have a particular sensitivity and agony around cell phone culture. In fact, we were just watching a Bob Dylan documentary and I looked over and you were like near tears going, well, I guess they got folk music and we got iPhones. <laughs> it's true though. Phones are like, I was just talking to my friend Beth Stelling. She got in. Two- Wait a minute. Hold on. You're friends with Beth Stella? Anyway, let me just tell you this really quickly. She's a comedian. She's very funny. But she got into some fights about... We went to this abortion thing, a rally, kind of. And On what side? Pro or, pro-life, or pro-choice? Obviously, pro-choice. Pro oh, shit. Wait a minute. And Hold we on. all posted... Wait a minute. I got a fight of the week to pick with you that I haven't prepared. We all posted these videos or these pictures of us and these shirts that said abortion AF, because that's the name of the com- the the organization. But... You know, it kind of is also slang as abortion as fuck. And it, people took that as a, an offense and everyone got mad. And so she started arguing with all these people on all the Instagram comments. Mm-hmm. My my Instagram, her Instagram, Sarah Silverman's Instagram. So she's arguing with people. And she said two days went by. Yeah, I hear you. And then she said, and she came over and we talked. She had just come out of it. And she's like, I feel sick. Yeah. And I do think the, the, the like your family doesn't make you feel sick. They're a positive well, thing. Like that's where you should put your energy. The phone never, it's just not like the phone is reaping great rewards. Every time you look at the phone, it's like a present of like the worst. Every time I look at the phone, it's like, oh, uh, dad just kills baby while she screams, bye daddy. It's like every single, or I'm just like well, looking at my Wait, Instagram let me, let me comments. Or, yes. Dad kills baby as she <laughs> screams, bye daddy. Compare that to man checks phone a little bit too much. I know you're I'm kind of killing it on the man department over here. <laughs> no, you are. But I'm just saying it's not like we're all going to our cell phones. and get, I mean, I guess we're getting dopamine high from like seeing that like some person was like, hey, can I smell your panties on your Instagram or whatever? I don't know. I'm sorry about that. And I've said <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I'm just saying it's not like it's reaping positivity in our lives or the bringing phone. us positivity. Why yeah. don't you get rid of your um, smartphone then? I don't I, because why go that far? I'm just saying it's like. Okay, well, what would you... So wait, why? I just thought you said it doesn't bring any positivity to you. Why not Why not get a flip phone? Because I like the convenience of playing music and getting, you know, having apps and turning on my hot tub and doing whatever I want to do on the phone. But what I'm saying is maybe it's like balance. Mm-hmm. And well, so I'm saying the phone doesn't deserve to be number one. That's what I'm trying to say. Well, if it makes you feel any better, um, in terms of my personal rankings of what's important to me... <laughs> I don't put the phone number one above my wife. I know my, or my you child. don't. I know you don't. I actually think of it uh, way down the list. Of course. But I'm saying the reality to me in the culture, in the home, is that the second we wake up, it's like phones. Mm-hmm. Or the second you get home from work, it's like phones. Mm-hmm. But maybe I'm exaggerating and I see too much into it. Maybe we can. No, I certainly have a, a, a healthy relationship with my phone. I don't. Um, I will certainly try to work on on doing that less. Like, you know, when you go out to dinner with people and you're like, it was so annoying. They were on their phone the whole time. That's your life with me? No, but I think that it's something (laughs) when you get really comfortable around people, it just gets very easy to like get into your phone. It's taking all I can to not say, but you're on your phone all the time too. But you're on the phone all the time too. I know. So what about that part of the culture? Maybe we need to do it together to model a different culture for our child. Don't stop bringing the child into this. Well, but isn't it 
doesn't she see us on our phones? I mean, that's part of it. Mm -hmm. If it was just me and you all day, I don't think I would care as much, honestly. Well, I think this is a thing that a lot of people are struggling with right now. And I will also say that I think the news cycle is part of it, is that we're fucking addicted. We're not just addicted to our phones. We're addicted to information. Mm -hmm. And Or I am addicted to information, I should say. And so it's difficult for me to put down the phone because the world seems like it's on fire and it mm -hmm. seems hard to look away. Mm -hmm. But honey, I'll try to look away more often for you. Okay, well, why don't you uh, check back in in a couple weeks? Let's see where we're at. I will not be checking back in, <laughs> but I have a feeling you will be. <laughs> Moshe, have I told you about my new bra? No, but I'm very interested. Well, I usually don't wear bras, but I was sent a third love bra, and it's actually the perfect fit. Oh, really? What size is that? Triple F. Oh, yeah. Ever since the surgery, you've changed. <laughs> no, but I, I don't usually wear bras because they never fit me right. And Third Love has more sizes than other brands. They have more than 70 sizes, including their signature half cup sizes. Yeah. So you know what? You skip the trip. You don't have to go to the store to buy it. You take this quiz online and they'll find the perfect fit for your bra. You don't have to go into a fitting room and have some awkward situation where the lady that works there is like, oh, you got nice titties. You know, that happens to me every time I go for a bra. Third Love helps you identify your breast size and shape and find styles that fit your body. It's the perfect fit. Yeah, and if you don't want to go to Third Love, you can just come come by my house and I'll help you identify the size. But you don't want to do that, so go to Third Love. It's so much better than dealing with me. Hands down, it's the most comfortable bra you'll own. It's the only bra I own and wear. Thirdlove.com slash honeymoon right now and you can get your perfect fitting bra and you'll get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash honeymoon for 15% percent off today third love knows there's a perfect bra for everyone so right now once again they're giving our listeners 15 percent off their first order thirdlove.com slash honeymoon natasha yes i'm the cook in the family right oh yeah but i get tired of having to go to the store buy a bunch of ingredients figure out a meal for the family it's difficult that's why i like things like daily harvest but i've joined other meal plan things that they send you the meal and it's they're nasty it's straight up nasty not daily harvest it's healthy that's what i like it's healthy and it's you tasty. are obsessed with healthy food i am food is medicine daily harvest delivers thoughtfully sourced chef crafted food that is built on fruits and vegetables and can be prepared in less than five minutes less five, than five. minutes that is crazy less that we were than able to do that. five you can fill your box with more than 65 different options like ready-to-blend smoothies, refreshing chilled soups, and savory harvest bowls. And you just put it in the freezer till you're ready to eat it. Each Daily Harvest cup takes one step to prepare with room for customization. Add your favorite milk to a smoothie and blend or heat a harvest bowl up and top it with an avocado or fried egg. The best part is Daily Harvest single-serving cups are the ultimate grab-and-go meal or snack. If you don't have time to mess around with slaving over a hot stove, you can get a dose of nourishing fruits and vegetables all day, anytime, whatever. So go to dailyharvest.com and enter the promo code HONEYMOON to get 25% off your first box. That's promo code HONEYMOON for $25 off your first box at dailyharvest.com. dailyharvest.com. dailyharvest.com with the code HONEYMOON. Never go to the grocery store again. Let's take a call. Okay, let's call Trevor in New Jersey. Hello? Trevor. What's going on? What's up, Trevor? How are you? This is Moshe Kasher. And Natasha, how you doing? I'm all right. Tell us what's going on. Yeah, let us in on your world, Trevor. Okay, so... uh at some point, I made the fucking dumb mistake of falling in love with my best friend, right? And we started dating, and we've been dating on and off for like the last year and a half or so. Um, got dumped by her uh, two weeks ago, and it fucking sucks. And I'm sort of trying to wonder what to do. Do I salvage the friendship, or do I start to go fuck off? I have a question. What's been your dynamic? Have, have you kind of like worn her down as a friend and she was kind of never really into it and you were always really into it and then you convinced her or vice versa? What's the deal? It sort of progressed. I wasn't like wearing her down. I didn't pursue it. It sort of just happened organically. That's good. That's a good sign. But how was the relationship? Uh, it was good. Uh, we, you know, we spent a lot of time together. Uh, very affectionate, very loving. But... It was always touch and go. I mean, 
she was like, you know, this can't be anything serious because I still have feelings for my ex, this and that. And I was like, you know, that's fine. I understand that. She had, she had gotten out of a, you know, like seven year long relationship or something like that. So I wasn't going to push anything, you know? Um, but once it was clear that she wasn't feeling like that, we decided that, okay, let's just try this in earnest. And this is where I find myself. And how long did you guys date? Like a good year and a half. And how long have you been uh, best friends? Uh, like two years before that. Hmm. Okay. That's not that long of best friends. That's like, <laughs> oh, <gosh>. that's. <laughs> Tosh coming in with that brutal honesty. Uh, I understand that. Like, I mean, a lot of people think like, oh, best friend. We've been friends forever. But um, I don't think that time dictates that. But when you were friends with her for two years, did you want to have sex with her? No, actually. I, for a very long time, was just, you know, about hanging out and just enjoying her company. We were friends, you know, go to go eat, go to the movies, go hang out. You know, no, 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 we know what friends are. <laughs> I guess we were wondering if we believe that you truly just thought of her in a platonic friendship way or if you were pining for her even ever so slightly. No, no, it was strictly platonic. So you're saying it was a it totally wasn't. platonic situation and then one day you found yourself in a year and a half relationship with her? How'd the switch happen? Yeah, I, I, it was progressive. Again, it wasn't like a night and day sort of thing. It sort of just happened. I can't know? imagine spending and, two years with Moshe and going out to dinner with him and then like seeing movies with him for two years and then finally deciding that like realizing I had feelings for him. Wait, but, w- you and I knew each other for years. But we didn't we hang dating. out. Like how many times a week would you hang out as best friends? Because he didn't say we were friends. They said He said they were best friends, yeah, which how, means they're very close. How much time did you spend with her? It would be like maybe once or twice a week. But then like communication was constant. Got it. I still, I'm still having a hard time. And Trevor, I know you're in the middle of a raw breakup. I don't want to be insensitive, but I also am a comedian and I want to make fun of you. So that's that's what I'm dealing with right now, Trevor. (laughs) We all have problems. Um, But I'm having a difficult time finding... I I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't believe you. Like It's hard for me to believe that you just were totally platonic and then one day were in love with her. Like, how did you go from being platonic to being... Just saying the word progressive. No, well, okay, it, it wasn't. It wasn't just like oh, one day. It was like okay, so you know, things slowly evolved to the point of like okay, it went beyond just friendship and it turned into whatever it was. Did either you of know? you guys have boyfriends or girlfriends at the a, time? What did you guys have like other partners at the time? Uh, no. So what? Um, what do you? What are you asking? I'm Tom? wondering maybe that's why they were just best friends because they were involved with other people. Oh, she's saying sh- your best friend slash girlfriend, she was in a relationship for those two years prior to you becoming romantic, right? I'm asking. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She-, she was. Yeah. And you were, you must have been attracted to her. N- actually, believe it or not, not at all. I actually <laughs> did not find her, did not find her remotely attractive. <laughs> Wait, but when did she become hot for you? What? When did she become hot to you? I don't know. Man. It was right around the time she broke it off with her boyfriend. <laughs> Look, I don't... I, listen, that baffles me too, because I don't know why the fuck it happened. Or I was just like, okay, yeah. Maybe this is cultural. Yeah, maybe this is a New Jersey thing. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe it's a Jersey thing. I don't fucking know, yeah. Well, I mean, listen, my advice was going to be two bits of hard truth. One of which is... You know, my you know Maya Angelou said, when someone tells you who they are, believe them. Like when someone breaks yeah. it off with you, you know, and you guys have broken it off before, right? This isn't the first time you broke up in your relationship. Yeah. How many times have you broken up? Uh, this is the second time. The second, or were there any near misses? Uh, no, this is like the second. Yeah. You never had any like almosts? No, no. This is like yeah, legit like the I- second. What was time. the first one about? Why'd she break it off with you um, the first time? Because, you know, we got involved and she was like, you know, I don't, I'm not sure that I'm fully over my ex. And I was like, you yeah, know, that's fine. I understand that. Like, I'm not going to, you know. Fair enough. You're like, me. I'm not even attracted to you anyway. Yeah. And then what about the second time? The second time was uh, more, she said she was feeling trapped, which I don't get because I, I'm not the type that's going to be like, oh, where the fuck are you? What are you doing right now? Blah, blah, blah. Well, you, you know? are from New Jersey, out, so you're... I'm having a hard time believing that as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I'm, Wait, I'm, can I'm, I ask him a question? I have a question. Yes, dear. We still have not gotten to the, like the first time you guys had sex or kissed. Like you kept, you just keep saying it was pr- it progressed, but like, what was it? Like, re- what came over you? What did she do that finally turned you on? Do you remember? 
the first time we ever kissed or hooked up, it was, uh, we, uh, we, we both did this thing where we're like, all right, we're going to drink for like two months. Right. And then we went to get some sushi, bought a couple of bottles of wine at the end of it. And then we got a little fucked up and things happened. Wait a minute. And you began your journey of not drinking for two months by I'm buying falling off the wagon, <laughs> falling off the wagon and fucking for the first time. This might be a bigger question than whether or not you should I think that go this fetch is, your best you friend. Should, you should let her have her space, and I think maybe you guys are both going to find other people. I think that's possible. <laughs> I mean, here's my real thing. My real advice here, and Natasha's laughing at you, and I think you deserve it. But uh, no, but you're in pain, and I understand that. Here's the thing. Like I said, when someone tells you who they are, believe them. If she breaks it off with you twice, it's not going to probably work out with the two of you. But maybe it will. You never know. But... My bigger thing is, like, could you see yourself getting back to the state where you're just close platonic friends with her? I don't think so, because things have been, like, too intimate, so I don't think there's... So you've answered your own question, Trevor. She, I, I she, have, she, yeah. doesn't want, she doesn't want to be in a relationship with you for whatever reason, and you don't want to be in a friendship with her for whatever reason. You can't have her romantically. You can't have her best friendly. So it seems pretty clear that it's time to take at least a little bit of space. And I know exactly what you need to do, Trevor. You need to t- uh, pick up your phone, go through your pictures, and get a Tinder picture and put it up tonight. Yeah, put it up tonight and say, I might not find you attractive, but if we drink enough <laughs> at sushi, I'll throw some of this Jersey dick down your throat. <laughs> okay, bye, Trevor. Good luck, Trevor. Goodbye, Moshe. Goodbye, Natasha. Thank bye-bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Some of this Jersey dick down your throat. <laughs> oh, my God. That guy was so full of it. I mean, he just couldn't be honest to save his life. <laughs> no, I don't like her. I liked her, then I didn't like her, then I liked her. She's then, good. I, then I was more sober than I've ever been in my whole life. And then I bought three bottles of wine and got so plastered I, I sol- fucked her. I made a solemn <laughs> vow to my lord and my nana. I'm never going to drink again. And that night when I was two <laughs> bottles down of port, I just started tonguing her. I mean, hey, that's how we do it in Jersey. <laughs> He seems like a nice guy, actually. He was very sweet. I liked him. He is a sensitive soul. He's probably young, and just he really does need to just date some more people. I mean, that's what it comes down to. So it's obvious. Like, it was also obvious. It's like he answered his own question. He can't go back to being friends with her. And she told him that he can't have her romantically. What are you going to do? Move on. It's so easy to say, move on. I know how hard it is to move on when you're really in love with somebody and they don't want you it's so difficult to like not fantasize that they're going to just like call you and be like you were right i missed you but they never call they never call and you got to just wait around until one of your comedy peers finally gets out of a relationship and then slowly you guys form a connection and then finally she converts to judaism and then <laughs> mazel tov drunken aunt jokes <laughs> all right we're going to try something here We're going to read a text exchange between a bride and a potential makeup artist that she wanted to hire to do her makeup at her wedding. So we will begin now with Natasha Leggero, famed actress and cell phone Gestapo (laughs) as the bride. And here is the ad that began the entire exchange. I'm looking for someone to do hair and makeup for my wedding day, which is just a small gathering as we've had to scale right back. As such, I'm looking for it to be as cheap as possible. It's just myself that needs making up at home, or I'm happy to come to you. I'm looking for 50 style hair, as in picture, below, and the classic makeup look. I really don't have a lot of money and would be happy to use a student that needs portfolio work or someone starting out and trying to build a wedding portfolio. Happy to sit for practice, and I'm happy to discuss styling options. Looking for recommendations and quotes. And beneath, there are two pictures, uh, both of whom look like they're a woman at a Cherry Pop and Daddy's concert. For context. <laughs> so here is the beginning of the text exchange, and Natasha, once again, will play Bride. Hey, Jesse, long time no talk. How have you been? Sorry to hear about your parents. Sorry I didn't get in touch at the time. Crying emoji. (laughs) So (laughs) I'm getting married. (laughs) Quote, third time's the charm. One eye open blinky face. And I'm looking for a makeup artist. Are you still practicing? And would you be free? (laughs) 
It's only a small event and I don't have a huge budget. Let me know, hun, H-U-N-X-X-X. No, I'm about to jump in and become the makeup artist, but I will just say <laughs> that this this rockabilly fan <laughs> is the worst human being I already, <laughs> message one, ever. She's like, I want it free. I want it free. I want to look like Marilyn Monroe meets Marilyn Manson. And by the way, sorry about your dead parents. <laughs> Okay, but here we go. Mosha All right, you Kasher play the ma- as makeup artist. <laughs> Hi. Wow. Blast from the past. I'm okay. How are you doing? Congratulations on your upcoming nuptials. You must be excited. Yes, I'm still a makeup artist. I'm in the process of opening a salon in London, which is exciting. Where are you living now? It might be easier for you to use someone close to you. Signal. This is a woman who has her shit together, who's like, ew, oh, fuck no. I am not interested at all. But let's find out what our friend the bride says. Not bad. Excited for the wedding. Blank says hi, by the way. Yeah, I thought about getting a local makeup artist, but like I said, I'm on a limited budget. This is the 90th (laughs) time she's mentioned that. Was hoping to get a friend's discount. 91. What's that emoji? Angry face? I think it's okay. Okay. It's only a three hours drive for you to come here. (laughs) And then you could come to the wedding if you wanted. Oh, wow. (laughs) It's on 18th of July this year. And I was really hoping to get a 50 style hair and makeup, which I don't think this is too complicated. I have some inspo styles that you could use. Okay. By the way, she said no. (laughs) She's already said no. (laughs) You could come and practice before so we can get settled on a look. I could try and come up to see you, but it's a long way and I'm not sure if I would be okay for the journey. Oh, okay. So it's it's only it's just a short three hour jaunt for her to come to the bride, but for the bride to come to her, that's that's a bridge too far. Okay, and she's not done. Please, please, please say yes, exclamation point. You could take some pics and use it for your portfolio. Fingers crossed. Kiss emoji. Ha ha. I see. Uh, well, how much do you think you could afford? My normal rates are 75 pounds per hour. I see they're British. This is the rare example of a British woman with absolutely no manners. <laughs> <laughs> I see. My normal rates are 75 pounds an hour plus travel expenses. I'm sure I could reduce it a little for a friend. By the way, this that's British for fuck you, bitch. I'm sure I could reduce it a little for a friend, but I'd need my travel covered. Also, I usually do makeup, but I can do simple hair. I didn't know your wedding was that soon. Not sure if I'm free that day, but I can check my calendar later. Don't think I'd be able to travel down for a trial. Like I said, I'm setting up my own salon at the moment, so we're pretty busy. And then her friend writes back the scream emoji and the dead emoji. (laughs) And then she screams. You really charge that much? (laughs) That is a lot of money, two exclamation points. I was hoping you would offer to do it for free, dot, dot, dot. Maybe as a wedding present for to me. (laughs) (laughs) Which I invited you to two text messages ago after not contacting you since your parents croaked. (laughs) I could probably give you 10 pounds for your travel. (laughs) But that's the equivalent of $15. But if you're coming to the wedding, then I don't really see why I should. (laughs) I don't feel like you're being fair. I invited you to my wedding, which is only small, and I've said you could use the pictures you take for your portfolio, so I'd be doing you a favor, too. Can't you meet me halfway here? Yes. Well, that's my standard rate. It really isn't that expensive for my experience and in the area I live in. Also, (laughs) we haven't spoken in 10 years, and the first time we do, you're texting me to ask you to do makeup for your wedding for free. I appreciate that you don't have a lot of disposable money at the moment. And if I lived closer, I'd try to help. But 10 pounds wouldn't even cover my gas for the six-hour round-trip journey, let alone my time or products. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to be able to do your makeup for you. If you want, I could send you some links to some YouTube videos that may help you do your own style. I hope you have an amazing wedding and a beautiful marriage. Fuck you, selfish bitch. <laughs> that is the end. And okay. I, whose side are you on? Natasha? I want to know what happened to this woman's parents. It wasn't just one parent. It was like, sorry about your parents. Oh, I want to know what happened to the other lady's parents. How did they raise such a fucking monster? Honestly, I remember when you and I were getting married, and that did not sound too dissimilar to your vibe. <laughs> I swear to God. Dude, I could not have had a different a different vibe than that. I was so chill. You were pretty chill. If anyone wants any wedding advice, I do have a tip because my friend's getting married and I was giving her some advice and realizing I really do have a wealth of information. What do you got? Uh, ambush well, one, your husband? No, but the one <laughs> thing that I think is a really good tip if you're planning a wedding yes. is anything they ask you 
for choices between, always just go with the cheapest and the simplest. Because all of a sudden you've added up like you've got like little things that nobody wants to eat. Like why not just have like tacos or whatever's the easiest to hold or like, Absolutely. do you want white chairs or brown chairs? Brown chairs are $2. White chairs are $4 each. And then all of a sudden like you, you're like, oh my God, I need brown chair. It's like people are sitting in the chairs. It doesn't matter. And then all of a sudden you've saved like $10,000 and less stress. I've got some wedding advice too. Yes. Never marry an Italian. <laughs> no, here's my real advice. Yes. Don't do a wedding party. Don't do bridesmaids. Don't do like groomsmen. That's stupid and for basic motherfuckers. Okay. Don't do toasts. Get that shit out of there. Yeah. Nobody no wants, microphones. At no the, microphones. At the wedding Nobody party. wants to see your stupid ass dad fumble his way through public speaking for the first time in his life. Your dad's a nerd. Nobody wants to hear from him. Okay. Speaking of microphones, get a microphone for the ceremony. You invited people to your wedding. Nobody wants to like watch two people cry t- over like muffled, unclear language. <laughs> For the Did rest we have of- a microphone? Hell yeah, we had a microphone and everybody could hear us. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Three, don't do a meal. Don't do a plated meal. That shit's nasty. Nobody wants to eat your rubber ass chicken or your couscous or your fucking quinoa option for the vegetarians. Get two two uh, hors d'oeuvre plates that'll feed people. What do we have? We had a taco truck and we had a, like a little station with sliders and everybody was like oh so so, so, uh bohemian you didn't even have seated seated dinners well of course not nobody wants to sit next to you you fucking aunt so anyway people liked it though it was the best our wedding was the fucking best But you also said no flowers so i had to like have them like bring out the i mean most people want flowers at their wedding i I, did i say no flowers i was all about like it doesn't matter everybody's gonna have a great time no matter what now here's my real advice be jewish like there's nothing better than a Jewish wedding. I'll tell you why. There is a uh, there is a there's a structure to the thing. Well, first of all, we didn't even read vows, which was dope. Like we just had to let the, the religion do the talking, and so it seemed really holy and spiritual. But neither of us had to go up there and be like Natasha. Oh my God, I've that would have been you awful for a thousand years. <laughs> As many <laughs> grains of sand as there are on the beaches of the world, that is how many feelings I have for you. Whatever. And our wedding was full of comedians, too, so there would have been all the pressure to make it funny. Well, anyway, listen, I know a lot of people want to do vows. It's, the vows are nice. I'm not saying don't do vows. Do the vows. But marry but, a Jew if you can. But here's the, here's the secret to the Jewish wedding ceremony that anyone, even a non-Jew, can co-opt. You do the ceremony, right? Then everybody kind of like mulls about for a while. You know, they start their little reception or whatever. Then they have a communal dancing situation. Mm -hmm. Not like a dance floor where it's like awkwardly watching your alcoholic great aunt like, you know, try to fuck your 20-year-old friend. It's like... It, there's there's that circle dancing, right? I'm making mm-hmm. a lot of jokes and you're not laughing at any of them. Maybe they're not funny. I'm not sure. Maybe you're too stoned. I don't know what's happening. Honey, I don't know how many alcoholic ant references I can <laughs> laugh at in one segment. I'm I sorry. Know. You know, just like prop me up here. <laughs> anyway, so he like I'm waiting to get to your t- to your tip. Here's my here's what I'm saying that anyone can do. So that's what what you do is it's not just like putting on a DJ and like lay down that boogie and play that funky music till you die. It's that like the horror. So everybody, everybody's dancing in a circle. So everyone in the entire wedding party from the oldest person to the youngest person starts off with like 10, 15 minutes of communal dancing, you know, where they like put the bride on the chair and then they put the groom on the chair and then they dance with the, anyway, by the end of that 15 minute, everybody dance session, everybody's already gotten all of their like embarrassment at dancing out of the way. Then you start the motherfucking DJ. Then everybody's down to dance. Didn't we party all night? Yeah, but the alcoholic aunt, what's she going to... I still don't understand how that takes care of her. It doesn't. It was just like a... Oh, okay. But A a little bit of... um, What is... It's just a little bit of color commentary. No, I like that. And I think also the older people can leave. Okay. Here's my next tip. What's your tip? Marry a Jew. Oh, that was my tip. I know. It was mine too. Why why do you think? It's just uh, the Jewish wedding and the Jewish men. They're great. (laughs) Okay, Tosh. You took a puff too many, perhaps. Do you, what? Other, what are your other wedding tips? Um. Well, I don't know. I mean, if you can, I just think spend as little money as possible. You know, like have it at your house or have it at a public, like have it at like at the beach. I totally agree. By a tree. I don't know. Like, what, remember that pretty tree your friend Annie had a party at? Like, just have it there, and then like get good food. The thing is, your wedding's going to be special no matter what. So there's no need to like throw money at it to try to construct a 
a manufactured version of specialness. The special part's already there. You're marrying somebody. Yeah. I just think it's such a waste. I don't like wasting money. Like and a lot of people spend like $30,000 on a wedding. But I have this whole theory about weddings, which is that basically it's interesting. It's like a big part of the patriarchy, right? The patriarchy. But like basically women are all told from the moment that they get ma- they are born that their wedding is going to be the most important night of their life. And then eventually they start getting messaged like, not only is it the most important night of your life, but you can fuck it up. And the way to not fuck it up is money. That's how you, that is the way not to fuck it up. Oh, I see. Spend, 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 make your perfect day. And there's a whole industry around it. And Same then, with having a baby. So then you do it. Exactly. Then you do it. You get married. And then the next thing you do is you have a baby and they're like, oh, sorry. That was the important, most important <laughs> night of your life. This is the most important mission of your life. And guess what? You can fuck it up. And the way out is money. Keep spending. All these industries are surrounded by, by just like making people afraid they're going to destroy something. We had a perfect wedding. It was really good. Making your home beautiful is the ultimate form of self-care. Now, was that copy that you were reading or is that a is that a sincere thought it's honestly not just a thought it's my philosophy (laughs) that's how you live your life have you not seen that i'm constantly trying to create beautiful tableaus that are like a comfortable little nook or a place to sit in when the sun's setting you do that but one of the problems with like really nice furniture is that sometimes it's not comfortable which is fine but not when you go to bed you spend a third of your life in bed so you want your sheets to be unbelievably comfortable i for sure want that i want comfortable sheets it's a it's a passion well brooklyn and sent us some sheets and we love them they're super good they're super comfortable we slept on them tonight well last night and i'll tell you what they got me in the mood brooklyn and sheets named the winner of the best of online bedding category by good housekeeping they've got a ton of good reviews from business insider apartment therapy men's health magazine over thirty-five thousand five-star reviews more than any other online bedding company these are luxury sheets towels bedding and more without the luxury markup most bedding is marked up as much as 300 percent. i do care about really nice sheets and they are super expensive and impossible it's just impossible to afford good ones without feeling like you got ripped off well brooke linen was the first DTC bedding company, meaning they work directly with manufacturers and directly with customers, so there's not a middleman. It's just a good product and a a great service, and you get it for cheap. They have towels, too. Get 10% off and free shipping when you use promo code HONEYMOON at brooklinen.com. That's right. That's HONEYMOON at brooklinen.com. They're so confident in their product and all their sheets, comforters, and towels actually come with a lifetime warranty. So the only way to get 10% off and free shipping is to use the promo code HONEYMOON at brooklinen.com. That's brooklinen, B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com. Code HONEYMOON. Well, this is something I've been thinking about a lot lately. September is National Life Insurance Awareness Month. I mean, I I think about this constantly. Most people aren't aware of that, but I am constantly aware of it because I really want you to get a very, very, very expensive life insurance policy. (laughs) But getting life insurance doesn't need to be expensive or difficult. 40% of Americans don't have it because they're freaked out about it. But you got to do it because what happens if you kick the old bucket and your family's there like, damn, I'm hungry. Where's daddy? Well, daddy don't live here no more. Right now, prices are the lowest they've been in 20 years, and Policy Genius has made it easier than ever to get covered. It's an easy way to shop for life insurance online. It's one of these things people don't do, but they should do, just like getting an AIDS test or making out a will. You've got to do it. Do it. In minutes, you can compare quotes from top insurers to find the best price. Policy Genius doesn't just make life insurance easy. They can also help you find the right home insurance, auto insurance, and disability insurance. If you need life insurance but you haven't gotten around to it, National Life Insurance Awareness Month is as good a time as any to get started. Go to PolicyGenius.com, get quotes, and apply in minutes. You can do the whole thing on your phone right now. Policy Genius, the easy way to compare and buy life insurance. Hey, honey. Yeah? Could you get a life insurance policy? I already have one. For how much? Okay, should we take another call? Let's do it. Now we're going to call Stephanie from Houston. Hello? Is Stephanie there? This is Stephanie. Hi, can I please speak with Stephanie? (laughs) Oh, hello. Hello, this is she. Hi, Stephanie. It's Natasha and Moshe. Moshe, Moshe, hi. Oh, thank you. (laughs) What about me? 
N- Natasha, you're like my forever favorite. So you never have to question. You guys get oh, to fight. I'm okay. automatically on your side. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, wait, do you think I use my phone too much? <laughs> um. Yes, obviously. Damn it. Damn it. Yeah, you're right. Okay. <laughs> Stephanie, tell us. Tell us what's going on. I think I, I just want to tell you off the top. I like you already. <laughs> okay, great. That makes me feel really happy. Um, Good. So I am 36. I've been married for almost seven years and been with my husband for almost 11. He is the best. Um, I love him so much. He's a dreamboat. He takes good care of me. And we are at that point in our lives where the fact that we haven't had children is a thing not between us but more for like everyone else in our life Um, are all your friends all your friends have babies uh, not all of them and like you know it's not my friends that are the problem it's just kind of the i think it's like the feelings that you get when just some random person like making small talk says oh so when are you guys gonna have kids or oh you haven't had kids yet like well, I've, small talks annoying no matter what. So, you yeah. know, that's just your particular one. I've been asked if what it's like being a female comedian in every interview I've ever had. <laughs> I'm just saying I, like there's going to be annoying questions. That's no reason you should like have a baby. Well, I don't know. I've always said that it, you know, when the best reason to decide to have a family is being annoyed by small talk. <laughs> Just basically, that would be my way of giving a middle finger to everyone who ever asked me that question. Look what I got now, guys. Uh, so wait, so you're are you you're feeling the pressure from like your the the world that you live in to have kids, but you don't know if you want kids yourself. Yeah, I mean, yes, for, like to be very frank about it, like I love our life. We have a great life. We have a dog that I treat like a child. Um, well, we, to be fair. Probably oh. not, but go ahead. I mean, but I know. That's I was just thinking that's probably not the best thing to say to new parents. Sorry about that. Oh, we don't care. We don't care. Okay. We we actually treat our child like a dog. So okay, you're oh, in good, good company. Know. Yeah, okay, good. I think it's more. I did teach the, her how to sit. Like I ha- taught all the dogs to sit and the child. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, I think it's the um, you know, we I like my life the way it is right now. Like I love uh, my jobs. I love my husband. I love the fact that we can do kind of really whatever I want. Does he want a baby? Good question. Well, you know, I married smartly, I guess, and married a younger man. So he's he's 32. So I don't think he's quite feeling that pressure in the same way I am. And I mean, granted, men, ugh, gross. You can have babies up until I don't know when, 90, who knows. But um, like me, I feel it more, you know, biologically. Um, yeah. Do you, what do you I, do for a living? Um, I actually have worked in education for the last 15 years. In um, Right oh. now I work for an amazing um, charter network where I help develop leaders who then coach teachers to work with underserved students. There's your problem. You're around too many underserved kids, man. You're, <laughs> you, you know, you're thinking that's the kind of kid you're going to get, but you're going to you're going to have yourself a nice, privileged little little uh, blonde haired boy who's going to come in and say, "Mommy, <laughs> mommy, may I have more quiche?" <laughs> um, also, wait, I have a question. Do you have ten thousand dollars? Could do you have access to that? Um, do I have access to ten thousand dollars? Yeah, mm-hmm. this isn't really a podcast. It's more okay. of a, a marketing scheme. <laughs> got it, got it. No, I, I think I know where Natasha's. <laughs> I think I know where Natasha's going with this, and it was going to be my advice too. She's a situational breeder. She'll breed if the situation is right. She's not there yet. He's <laughs> he's not there yet, and also, why put pressure on him? He's like might not be there for eight more years. If you have that kind of money, you could freeze embryos freeze. with him, yeah. and then if you guys mm-hmm. want to. You could always do it when you're like 40. Yeah, you just. I had my out. baby when I was 42. I think as long as you're, you maybe get your uterus checked just so you oh. know. And if you need somebody to check your uterus, I actually provide that service. <laughs> we'll oh, fly you out for that. Service. Yeah, yeah, it's part of the loving. podcast. No, and honestly, no, I have so many no, friends no, who got pregnant you naturally. You had your baby at 42. Yeah. You are lying. You well, okay. No, I'm sorry, but you just like you know you don't look a day over like. 26 so i just oh. was making sure that's weird I, I i say the opposite to her um no oh. you, you, but but a lot of girls have babies naturally over 40 as well so i also think that maybe you should just like 
if you don't have the money, not really worry about it. But if you do have the money, and that's obviously a luxury to have that much money, you should definitely do that. And you don't, the world's ending. In two years, we could find out that like we're going to go into I catastrophe know, instead of chaos. And that's sort of the, and that's so, the rub, right? It's like, also, do I want to bring another person into this? Like, but you might have a change of heart and you might think I want to have a baby who's part of the solution because we need to be having like smart children to like lead us into this future of chaos. So maybe you'll change your mind. Mommy, when I'm done with my quiche, I think I'm going to solve global warming. (laughs) That could be your child. That could be my child. I think here's the so smart. He dressed up as Einstein when he was like six for Halloween. So you never know. But that um, sounds. But that's another thing to consider because one of the reasons why I wanted to have a baby with Moshe and I froze my eggs before I met him, because I when I met him I was like, oh, he'd be like a fun, smart dad. Yeah, here's what and I you think. You knew he would be and, a good dad, and I know I know my husband would be a good dad. Like that's not I mean, even a question. It's here's what it sounds like to me from from my having known you for five minutes on the phone. Mm-hmm. You kind of want kids, but you also kind of don't. Kids yeah. are a decision that are permanent and they never leave for the rest of your life you will have that child so it's certainly not a decision to enter into quickly but women have always had a have have always had a biological issue with the ability to wait as long as they would want to because their bodies maybe it becomes more difficult the older woman gets but technology has progressed to such degree that that isn't as true as it used to be and you can freeze your eggs also watch the adam ruins everything episode about the myths of childbirth because women can have natural children much later than it is generally thought everyone so, says geriatric pregnancy but that's just a rude term invented by a man in the oh the my god 60s that is the right? rudest like most aggressive term it's like if you're over 32 you're a geriatric pregnancy I so guess. here's like, oh here's what you do freeze them bad boys go there okay. have your have your young ass husband bust a load on on your eggs and then freeze them bad boys put Got them in it. the freezer while, while you guys gallivant and and have fun and do whatever you want if at some point you're like you know what i'm i really want to have these kids let's you, unfreeze baby we'll, arthur oh, we'll unfreeze arthur and pop him right up in there or maybe by the time you want to unfreeze Arthur, you're going to be thinking to yourself, you know what? Things have progressed to such a degree that even though I do want kids, I don't feel right about bringing another child into this yes. world. Well, well, guess what? You work with underserved kids, so I'm sure that you have some access to a foster or adoption network. See, and that's you can adopt kind of the... Yeah, that's like, I think, like honestly, where my heart might lead me to. Um, I have a couple of friends who have gone through the foster to adopt uh, system and I know it can be like a heartbreaking process, but sure. like for me, I love the idea of giving some existing child a home where they would be loved and cared for. I think that's I so also cool, think, and though, I that think there are that, like there's an implication though as a white woman potentially raising a child of color. So like well, that's something well, that I also don't I like. Don't this is what you do, lightly. Stephanie. It's simple. I hear that. That's a that's a heavy thing. So you just go down to the foster network and you scream whites only and find yourself a nice <laughs> Arthur Arthur who's was, been, had some actually, issues. I think that that's like such obviously the way to go. Um, that really and also the fact that you're the, the fact the fact that you're open to adopting or fostering, I think, is like not everyone is. In fact, a lot of people aren't. And if your husband, like I would be, but I don't. I don't know if Moshe would be, and then I'm I second guess it. But if both of you are, I think it's like such a positive thing. And I agree. We should all be trying to do that if we if we're into it. And also, Stephanie, you're right that there are weird optics and politics and privileges of white people fostering and adopting kids of color. Yeah, but, and that those are difficult things. But it's probably more difficult to just not have a home to go to so you know it's oh, kind of like you, and, and, and you know like this more go to uganda and and steal a baby and save <laughs> be a white savior no it's about uh, yeah you know like older children of color generally don't get placed very easily so so yeah, yeah i'm sure we can all we can all wrestle through our white guilt uh but anyway whatever the point is freeze the eggs if you don't want to unfreeze the eggs, adopt a kid. If you don't want to adopt a kid, go to Europe. You're going to have a great life no matter what choice you make. Oh, yeah. Okay. That sounds great. Um, Spend your vacations up. in Cabo and Ibiza and think, wow, Moshe <laughs> and Natasha really fucked up with that little kid they got. 
And don't worry about what people think because adopting a kid is like one of the ways you can actually truly make a difference in the world, I think. Yep. That's so, true. I think it's truly like a, it's almost a, a selfless decision in a lot of ways. So I think it's one of the more noble things a person can do. So figure out if you want to be selfish. I mean, here's the thing for us. The reason we had a biological child was because like my genes are just so good. It would have been selfish to not bring a biological casher into the world. But not everybody's in that situation. I mean, yeah. I mean, some of us just like were like in the four to six range, not the like <laughs> in eight to ten range. And that's OK. Well, you know, you know what? You're going to be able to teach this child math. And I think that's very exciting. <laughs> Stephanie, good luck to you. I think you have a firm head on your shoulders and you know what to do. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. I'm a big fan. Okay, good luck. Keep doing good work so I can watch it. Well, you too. You seem like an awesome person, and so any kid would be lucky to be able to live with you. Oh, thank you, Moshe. Thank you, Natasha. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye. All right, Tosh. Well, this was quite a... We went on quite a journey. We started off with... Uh, me being ambushed about my phone use, and I've thought a lot about it, and I think you're right. I need to use my phone less. I don't know how. It's very difficult. I do feel like a little bit trapped in the uh, spider web that is the information superhighway. Can I just make a point, though? Oh. I don't think you should not be on your phone. No, I know you don't. I think maybe the answer is just like a little bit of engagement and then just awareness that you're even on the phone. I don't want you to feel like I'm ignoring you, so I'm going to try my damnedest to get better at that. Thanks. Yeah. Now I've got a couple of critiques for you. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. We had a bunch of good calls. And if you want to give us a call, please call us and tell us your secrets at 213-222-8608. That's right. Leave a secret. Have us call you. Give you advice. We love you. And more importantly, Tosh? I love you. Oh, you love me? Well, I love you too. Hey, thanks for listening, and remember to check out Roman. Yeah, that's right. If you got a flabby dick that you can't get hard, you go to GetRoman.com slash Honeymoon and get yourself a free online visit. GetRoman.com slash Honeymoon. Call today. And get Roman. Roman.